Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the convergence of Fourier series. So this is really where we're going to, you know, throw up the big theorem. Uh, the big theorem uh, that states in what manner in what manner does f uh, does f hat the Fourier series uh, represent uh, f of x, you know, which is some given function? All right, we have a few tools of the trade. First off, let's just write down f n that truncated Fourier series a naught plus the sum going all the way up to n, n starting at 1, you have an a n cosine n x plus b n sine n x. Like that. All right. And that's f n of x. All right. And we have the error. We have e n is equal to uh, is equal to the squared error between f and f hat comma n, right? Squared error. And we know our coefficients. It's going to be related to the inner product. Uh, orthogonal projection coefficients that we're familiar with from previous videos. And although they're tedious to write, it's important to write them down. So we all know, have all the basic facts at our fingertips. Okay, so we compute those, right? And then we wanna know a few questions, right? The other thing we know, we have some other things. From the previous videos, we also defined the periodic extension. And that was called F P E of X. And the idea there is that if you have a function, uh, and we should say this given function is defined um, on negative pi to pi. And from negative pi all the way to pi, f does its thing, whatever it is. What we're going to do now is just copy and paste uh, versions of, of that function going off in both directions. Right. All right, so we have this thing called the periodic extension. Also, uh, we are only going to consider f functions that are uh, piecewise smooth. So this piecewise smoothness means that only finitely many, there's only finitely many discontinuities discontinuous points within our interval. Okay. Uh, discontinuous points of f and df dx. So there's only a few points where these are these functions are discontinuous or not defined. Uh, and so we can, you know, we can sort of overlook them and look at only at <coughs> um, 
the points or the the remainder of the of the interval where things are continuous and smooth, i.e., the derivative is continuous. Okay. So those are the ground rules, all right? And our questions, we've had these questions for a while. The first question is, uh, um, does the limit as the capital N of our truncation, I'll just say that it's the, our error function, um, EN, does it go to zero? And the second question I have is, in what sense or what conditions, under what conditions does f hat, the full Fourier series, the infinite series of x, actually equal f of x? for a particular value of x in our interval. So that's that second question. And so the answer is going to be elaborate. It's more than, especially for number two, we're going to have many comments about number two. But the theorem we want to, to, to outline here, and, the, and I'll just put it in red, we want to get a big theorem that kind of covers these questions and it can describe what it means for a Fourier series to converge. All right, so that's our set of facts. Now let's state the theorem. So the theorem, the theorem is if F is piecewise smooth, I'll just write that out. on negative pi to pi um, and of course we need the fact that the function is is not pathological in some way uh, that it's integrable like that and you know we can compute all the Fourier coefficients okay then The following are true in state one. Uh, it is true that the limit as capital N goes to infinity of f, the magnitude of f minus f hat n squared goes to zero. Okay, we're not going to prove this. Okay, so in a more advanced class, uh, one would actually go through the proof of why that is true. Uh, but for here, we'll just leave it as it is. Um, um, and the second question then, the second thing we have to do is about, uh, so this statement is one of zero error. Okay, and that's nice to know. The second fact we want to state is that of what we call general convergence. And general convergence just mean that uh, the infinite sum of f hat of x converges to some finite value. Uh, for all x in the interval. So some, you might be asking, what particular values? Well, num our statement number two doesn't say, but we're just saying that the, that the Fourier series is at least a valid sum, that it's a convergent thing, that it, it, it's not infinite, there's nothing broken about the infinite series, that it, that it, that it generally works. Okay, three, is now one of pointwise convergence. Uh, 
at points of continuity of f of x. Uh, all right, that, that it basically says that that infinite series is actually equal to f of x when x is a point of continuity. Okay, so that means that these two functions, so this answers part of that, that first question, or that question we had is, is what is f hat? Is f hat equal to f? Well, it is when our function f is continuous. All right, now number four. Number four is we got what we call mean value convergence. At, disc, disc, at, at jump discontinuities. Mean value convergence, so this is where things get interesting. If x, we'll call it x star, is a point of discontinuity, then f hat at x star. So the question then, is: does the Fourier series choose one side or another? Uh, uh, the answer is no. It, it actually splits the difference between the jump discontinuity sides. So it actually ends up being the average. We're going to approach that from the negative side of fx minus limit x goes to x star from the positive side. So we're going to add those two together, sorry. And then we're going to divide by 2. So what we're doing is basically averaging the left and right our limits. So what we're going to get is if you have a function, suppose your f does that, this is your f of x. And this point right there is represented by x star there, has a jump discontinuity in it. f hat will be right in the middle. So th at this point, f star, f hat star, will not equal f of x, uh, but rather, in general. Okay. And finally, the fifth one, and this basically says that uh, the Fourier series modes sine nx cosine nx form a basis for all uh, functions uh, for all functions that have the property that their squared error is finite, or their, their squared magnitude is finite. All right, and that one just says that, yeah, you can get anywhere you want. Uh, if you have a function that's square integrable, then f forms a basis for the, all of those fun or the, the sorry, the Fourier series modes forms a basis for all of them in the sense that they, it will converge in the zero error sense, in the sense of number one up here. All right, so that's the statement of the theorem. And we have this neat fact. In later videos and in discussion and lecture, 
we'll talk more about the significance of this theorem, its power, and, and how, how just dramatically powerful this theorem is in all sorts of applications. Thank you very much.